This is not going to be the usual Theo video. Not that there is a usual Theo video, to be fair, but this is going to be more of a story and a journey to utter chaos. Some of the stupidest things I've ever seen anyone say on the internet, combined with fundamental misunderstandings of encryption, randomness, uniqueness, and a challenge that I presented, as well as a bunch of very fun memes and community stuff throughout. It started somewhere very interesting. I made a post about public URLs. The reason is a lot of the products we build would be significantly easier if the data wasn't put behind a traditional authentication wall. Rather, it was put behind a public URL that was super unique, so it's impossible to guess. I wanted to see how people felt about this in terms of public versus private. Would you consider a URL with a super unique UUID plus other data to be truly private? Or is it public simply because you can copy paste the URL and you now have access to it. I thought this was an interesting question, and I got some really interesting feedback from people, including a super interesting source. This is how Google Photos used to work, where every image, when you opened it, would load a public URL, but they were randomly generated with the UIDs, so the likelihood anyone would find your URL was zero. Got enough feedback to pretty confidently say, we cannot do this the way I want to for a few of our products. That's totally fine. We're not here to talk today about the public URL problem, although believe me, I wish we could. We're here to talk about a very interesting reply. Yes, it is public because you can easily brute force all variations. The question is if the data is worth the brute force costs for the one brooding. I am not convinced that Charlie here knows what a UUID is. And considering the fact that I had to spend hours trying to explain this to him, trying to build a challenge to get him to prove his bad assumption, and then doing a bunch of public comments about all of this, if you want to see how far this spirals, down to an update to everyuuid.com where you can scroll to try and find my UUID to win the thousand dollars that I put up as a challenge is going to be a fun one. <laughs> but someone has to pay these bills because I did all this shit for free. So quick sponsor cut. We'll be right back. Postgres is an incredible technology, but I feel it tries too hard to impress us with the tech and not enough to be a good dev experience. And all the companies building cool things around Postgres are still way too focused on the tech. What about my developer experience, my scale, all the things I have to worry about when I'm creating things using Postgres? What if an expert in DX came in, an industry leader in the best possible experience using a database? I can think of one company that makes a lot of sense here, and they just introduced a database product you should definitely check out. Prisma is here with Prisma Postgres. I'm not exaggerating when I say that Prisma is one of the biggest level ups in the developer experience I've had using databases. It entirely changed my mental model, not just for how I would access a database, but how I would use TypeScript for full stack applications. The T3 stack largely exists because of how good Prisma was, and now they're taking their expertise to the infra level. You can literally deploy a database in three clicks. You get 10 of them for free, insane. It works perfectly in serverless environments, which is not trivial for Postgres databases. Normally you have to bake a bunch of crazy connection pools and stuff. That's all gone here. Cold starts are gone too. They figure that all out on their infra. Their edge network's crazy. You can manage the cache from the ORM directly, literally calling prisma.accelerate and validate to invalidate a given cached query. And you can tag them like this with a cache strategy so you don't have to go all the way to the database to get some data. So normally to build a cache layer on top of the API, on top of the ORM, on top of the DB, that's all gone and you're keeping the type safety along the way too. It's so cool. If you want a scalable Postgres solution that feels like it's ready for the modern era, I cannot recommend anything higher than Prisma. Check it out today at soydev.link slash prismadb. So what the hell happened? Let's go through this thread in order. Charlie here is confident that he can brute force all variations of UUIDs. Not only is this bold, it's just objectively false. If you're not familiar, UID v4, there's a lot of them. How many? 5.3 times 10 to the power of 36. It's two to the 128. It's like, I think the number's undecillion. The likelihood you'll generate two UUIDs that are the same is roughly equivalent to running at a wall full speed and phasing through it because the atoms lined up with the atoms in your body such that none of them collided. It's roughly the same chance. In fact, I think running through the wall is a higher likelihood to be successful. If you don't know what UUID stands for, it's literally universally unique identifier. The goal of UUIDs is to have an identifier that's unique enough the likelihood you will generate to in a truly random environment is effectively zero. And to be clear, I'm not saying it's impossible. If your random generation solution isn't random enough, you can absolutely generate the same UUID twice. Thankfully, the vast majority of implementations anyone would use today are properly, truly random. 
this makes the website with every UUID that much more impressive because it has all five point whatever undecillion and you can command F for any given UUID and find it. The hacks that Nolan did to make the site work are incredible. But to go back here, let's get through the thread. As I said here, are we talking about the same UUIDs? Because the easily brute force all variations quote is what? How do you brute force 5.3 times 10 to the 36 of anything? That's not viable. He then claims it's actually two to the power of 32 variations. And if you can make 100K requests off of one server per second, then you can brute force it in 12 hours. Two to the 32 is a significantly smaller number than two to the 128. This is a made up number. I was so confused when he said this that I said, where the fuck did you get that number from? I asked E3 chat, because what else would I ask? As you see, very large number. UID is not entirely random. You generate one UUID number and then variate up and down for each item in the key. Two to the 32 odds are you will find the correct one in 12 hours. To which I very calmly explain that he has literally no idea what the fuck he's talking about. He then drops a very, very funny article here. Where in some specific Java implementation, there's a C function that has a high and a low value that are random, but the random isn't random enough and the high is persisted. So theoretically, you'd be able to, with a likelihood of two to the 32, guess another UUID it might've generated. Assuming you're using all of these particular bad implementations. Also I've noticed that this article is almost 10 years old and within a couple weeks of it being published, Chrome updated to make sure that this theoretical attack couldn't happen. And even better, if you were using the crypto.getRandomValues or the crypto.getRandomUUID functions, you would never have had this problem in the first place. The only way you could have had this problem is if you misused math.random in Chrome to manually generate an ID using the specific implementation that nobody was using. So given 15 theoreticals, all of which have been outdated for 10 years now, it is potentially possible that given all my code is running on one single server, all the generation happens on that one server, the UUID implementation is using this unsafe implementation from 10 years ago that nobody actually used. The UUID is the only identifier. There's no additional information used in this uh, check. And you have another UUID that was generated through the same pass. There is a theoretical path where you could maybe generate another ID that that computer generated also assuming it's not UUID v4. I even forgot that part when I wrote this rant here. It's not a real thing. It is comically so not a real thing. Personally, I would run the code on a Lambda and a proxy. I could make millions of requests per second. Brute forcing is feasible via off the shelf. Specialize in synthetic data and AI simulations. No, you either specialize in trolling me in particular or being stupid on the internet. It's one or the other and I haven't figured out which still, honestly. My, my gut is that he said something stupid realized at some point that he was super wrong and instead of accepting it, just kept getting stupider. Somebody asked, why am I so aggressive? Because he said something really stupid and indefensible. So much so that I think it's important to make a video here. So I said specifically here, he backed it up with an article about something entirely different. He confidently says, it's the same thing. Maybe I discovered something new that no one else did, but give me a challenge with a considerate prize money and I will do it. So I did. I presented the impossible challenge. If it's so easy to guess a UUID, here you go. I ran the crypto random UUID function twice in node on my computer. The first ID is this. The second, that's your challenge. I encrypted a text file with the following command. And I will admit I screwed this up slightly because I used AES-256, which will decrypt successfully on nonsense values one out of 2000 or so tries. I should have used a different encryption method that will always fail unless it's the exact right encoding. My mistake, I haven't encrypted something for the sake of brute forcing before crazy enough. And I said, if you can crack this, I'll give you a grant. And I even said it'd be easier to brute force it than decrypt it properly. And I put a file link up here so you can go download that file. Obviously, he responded very intelligently. The prize money's not high enough. Server costs alone, assuming you don't have proxy detection, will be $2,000. So you need to be a target with prize money of $100,000 or more to be worth my time and risk. Can someone in chat explain how proxy detection is helpful here? How does proxy detection what does proxy detection have to do with decrypting a file locally? Can anyone explain this to me? There we go. Nothing. There is no need for proxying anything because you download the file on your computer or server 
and try to decrypt it using the code that you generated. If you had to re-download the file every time or something, whatever, but that I made this challenge specifically so that I wouldn't have to eat a server cost as you prove that you're wrong effectively. But as we've hopefully established at this point, our friend Charlie doesn't seem to know how to read, which is why I got one of the most brutal ratios I've ever had in my life. Prize money, not high enough, yada, yada. Thank you for confirming you have reading comprehension issues. 13 to 1K. I am proud of that. Anyways, once again, I said, if the data is worth the brute force, if you're offering a smaller subset of data, yada, yada, in addition to the brute force methods I'm using, it does not differentiate between large and small subsets of data. It uses patterns and randomization to choose where to attack. I point out the proxy thing again, because he still hasn't addressed that. Do you use Cloudflare? Is this your own server? Do you use serverless with AWS that has some proxy detection built in? There are so many variations here. You didn't read the challenge. There are no network requests. Step one, download file. Step two, decrypt the file locally. I make a signal boost post because I think this thing is funny and I want others to see it. Someone who replies, convince themselves they can crack any UUID in 24 hours. I presented, he actually went further. He said 12 hours. I presented the following challenge and they backed out because the server costs alone would be two grand. This challenge runs locally. <laughs> I dropped this bit here because a couple of you were confused, which I understand. Thankfully, the people who were confused, other than our friend Charlie here, were not pretending that they knew how all of this worked. You also might see that Charlie is following me now. He was not when he started, which is a big part of why I was willing to talk so much shit, because he was not trying to figure things out. He was trying to assert lies. That is my line. If you innocently ask a question out of a place of misunderstanding, I would love to help where I can. If you are lying consistently publicly about a thing you do not understand, I will make you feel terrible for it, which is why we're all here today. My favorite post here is, I'll even give you a hint. The answer's on this page with a link to the every UID site. He jumped back in here. I wasn't going to respond because I'm tired of arguing for something that doesn't impact me. However, if you insist by making it so I can only decrypt locally, that means I'm limited to one server. What? How does having the file limit you more than having to hit an endpoint? What? The best part, the sorry Theo, nothing personal. After saying the stupidest possible thing, Thankfully, chat gets this. This literally means you're unlimited in scaling. So I know what trolls look like, and none of my troll senses have been going off throughout this one, even though I, I feel like they should be. Just the, the way he has asserted so many of these points and the way he's been trying to get real work and security, seemingly, publicly, is just the stupidest thing I've ever seen in my life. I felt like I was going insane at this point, but I wasn't the only one who felt that way, which is why our friend Nolan who you might remember from the Million Checkboxes video. If you haven't seen that, I think that's a, a must watch. One of my favorite videos I've ever done because it was about his video, which is one of my favorite videos I've ever watched. Nolan is one of the most creative developers I've ever seen, making truly novel, exciting things on the web. And he made the Every UUID site, which was a crazy hack, just an unreal, genuinely novel, insane hack in order to allow you to see every UUID on one page. He was excited about this. So he decided to go add a feature to the site, the find Theo's UUID. So if you add to the end of the URL slash hash Theo, it will add this little box that will stay there as you scroll. And as you scroll, it'll try to decrypt the payload with every UUID you scroll by. This is particularly funny because he had to implement AES256 in the browser for it himself. Nolan's a god. It did something really fucking cool with this. Give him a follow if you haven't. The dude's a legend. I'll leave his YouTube uh, link in the description too because you should follow him here. I have a feeling he's going to be making good content in the future. One of my favorite people in the space. The problem was, as I mentioned before, you can decrypt this file with random UUIDs. It's just that the result is nonsense. This is Charlie. And what's even funnier is he got it through the website and he super confidently states that he cracked it. And this was the result when you decrypt it with his ID because he wasn't checking what the output was. He was just checking if it would decrypt. But my challenge wasn't decrypt it. My challenge wasn't even tell me the text inside. It was crack this UUID. And nobody has gotten the right UUID yet. I've kept a close eye on this. I haven't checked today yet. So I'll triple check first and foremost. Nope. I gave the hint that the first two letters are TH and it is a valid English sentence so that filters could be added to the every UUID site so it wouldn't come up all the time. Because a lot of people, when they were scrolling, as you'll see in the screenshots here, had a success where it would decrypt with like caret R. Obviously, that is not the right thing. So I gave the hint here. No one updated the site. 
People largely gave up. I even had a few friends who aren't in this dev world at all give it a shot too. I had one friend, Bonesy, who tried to do this with ChatGPT. She's not a dev, she's a gamer, but she tried to use ChatGPT to figure this out. And since AI generates outputs based on what's most likely from the previous input, it hallucinated some very funny things here. The cake is a lie and you solve nothing were what it guessed the text would be in that encrypted binary. And what was extra funny is she hadn't even given it the binary and it was still guessing. It even at some point, if I can find it, printed out the likelihood of given things. She thought I had made this a really crazy challenge and was hiding different potential decodes in it because the AI hallucinated that hard. No, I love you, Bonesy. I did nothing special here at all. I'll even show you guys the text, the text that I've been hiding up until now. The challenge has been invalid for 48 hours at this point. Here is the text. There's a literal 0% chance you're able to get into this file. That was the text. The, let me find the UUID quick, because I have it. Found it. Here we are, the UUID. Now I want to see something real fun. Ta-da. When you paste the right UUID, you can command F to it because of the wizardry that Nolan put in. And if I refresh the page and go to it, it decrypts. Literal 0% chance you're able to get into this file. Pretty cool. I, Nolan killed it in this. The only person who came out actually smart throughout. I thought this was the funniest thing ever to, to make a website where you can scroll past every UUID, theoretically, and generate this. It would only take... I think it was 17 trillion years to do it was the number somebody dropped that sounded like it made sense. It's kind of crazy. <laughs> Hilarious though. Yeah, I, I hate to keep harping on it, but the whole, like, his use of serverless here was very funny to me. Ever heard of serverless? I can use 10,000 servers at the same time and use the UUID itself as the register. My forcing me to decrypt locally, I now need to coordinate servers with my local. Highly complicates things. It makes architecture much more complicated. No, it fucking doesn't. What? You have to keep track of the UUIDs you've gone through already, no matter what you do. So if you're brute forcing hitting a URL or you're brute forcing decrypting a file, there is literally no difference except for the fact that my server can't rate limit you if I hand you a file instead. I literally created the perfect version of this challenge where if his assertions were true, he could trivially prove it and make some easy money. But instead, he said the stupidest possible things on the internet. I, I am so amused that for some reason he has deluded himself into thinking that brute forcing URLs is somehow easier to orchestrate than brute forcing a decryption. Good point from chat. You technically don't need to keep track since the odds of hitting duplicates are so low. Yeah. It's very possible we have been trolled. I, if we have been trolled here, it's this legendary comic. Joke's on them, I was only pretending. But uh, I don't think he was. I, I think chat's onto it here. Fragile ego, guy was definitely for real. Yeah. Charlie watched some computer file videos on encryption and IDs. Bro is more likely dumb. Yep. I haven't made a video going after somebody like this before, but I don't care. I lost so much of my time and sanity to this absolute chaos of a thread and a challenge that I have to get something back for it. Some part of me should probably feel bad. None do. I have said all I have to do. Maybe he was vibe thinking. <laughs> <sighs> now tell us with a straight face that it wasn't worth it. Okay. I can't. It was worth it. This was so fun for me. This is all I've been talking about for like two days now. This whole thing was such a genuine absurd journey that I wanted to share it with y'all. This was a fun one. I know this is nothing like my normal videos, but I hope you guys enjoyed the journey I had to go on here. Let me know what you thought. Do you enjoy these chaotic deep dives on random fucking things, or would you prefer I stick to real traditional topics? Let me know. Until next time, keep your UID safe. You never know who might steal one.